With the adjustment tools, you can adjust exposure, correct color, or create unique color tones and moods for your images. It's here in the toolbar, or just tap the A key. Before we start, and as with any project, always make sure that you have your original image backed up by creating a duplicate from the layer settings. Since the adjustment functions are destructive, this will also be helpful in case you need elements from the original image again. Destructive editing would mean that any new adjustments would be recorded and overwritten directly onto the image itself. Still, do not worry. You can use the undo and redo functions to cycle between steps. Ready? Let's begin. At the very top would be the auto fix function. It analyzes and decides if adjustments need to be made to give images a simple contrast and vibrance boost. If it detects enough of these values, changes will be minimal. While some would prefer to make adjustments manually, the auto fix function can also serve as a starting point for further enhancements. To introduce quick artistic effects, we have the black and white function that desaturates and converts color images into grayscale. In Word, lets you reverse the colors of an image, resulting in a negative effect. After applying any of these functions, you can follow up with the other useful tools in which we will be exploring now. The color section provides adjustment options for all things color related. Vibrance will boost muted colors, meaning it will only affect colors that are not already bright. It will also keep skin tones from getting overly saturated or overly intense to the point of it being unnatural. The saturation slider controls overall color intensity. Unlike vibrance that only affects muted color tones, saturation applies a blanket change to all colors. So over application will result in loss of detail and also cause skin tones to become highly saturated. Moving the slider to the left would desaturate and remove color information. Here's a comparison between the original on the left, vibrance in the middle, and saturation on the right. Both vibrance and saturation are at the maximum adjustment value of 100. The colors are brighter and more vivid, but skin colors on the vibrance example appear to be more natural compared to that of saturation, which is now in an orange tone. So unless if it's something you're going for, do keep an eye out when increasing saturation for images. The temperature slider allows for color temperature adjustments. Introduce a cooler tone to your images by sliding left or slide right for warmer tones. Tint adds a color tint over images to achieve a filtered look. Adjusting the hue slider would shift and change the overall color tones of your images. If you like to target specific areas or objects, the cutout tool can be first used to extract them for independent adjustments. For a quick demonstration, we'll change this model's hair color. We already have a duplicate layer, so now we'll just hide the original layer for the time being. Using the draw cutout method, we'll roughly brush over the hair on the duplicate layer to remove it. Show the original layer and have it selected. Then, choose the Adjust tool and drag on the Hue slider to pick a favorite color. Next up, covering aspects related to lighting or the tonal range of an image would be the Light section. Tonal range would mean the amount of tones between the lightest and darkest parts of an image. Brightness equally controls the overall light and dark values of your image. Drag right to brighten, left to darken. Exposure adjusts the mid-tones and can lighten an underexposed image or darken an overexposed one. Contrast would mean the difference between the highlights and shadows of an image. Dragging the slider to the right increases intensity for both bringing out details and definition. Dragging left does the opposite, making images dull. Going all the way, we completely grey out images. The black slider controls the darkest tones of an image to make them darker or lighter. These tones will be pure black and do not contain data. 
While increasing the black tones do improve contrast, do pay close attention to the process, as it can darken and remove image details from shadow areas, making them pure black, just like the base of this chess piece. The white slider would control the brightest or pure white tones, and in similar fashion would cause highlight blowout if increased excessively. The highlights function can control or bring back details in the bright areas of an image. Have a look at the bumper section of this car. There are some details there, but they aren't that obvious due to the highlights being too bright. By lowering the highlights, more of the bumper texture is now visible. Some of the brighter parts of the image will also be darkened. Shadows does the opposite and recovers details from dark or shadowed areas. Shifting focus to the background, we can see more hidden details as the slider is dragged to the right. However, do keep in mind that these two functions can only recover detail if there is data present, meaning that they are not completely black or white. And while they might seem similar, when compared to the black and white sliders, highlights and shadows cover a tonal range that is much more narrow, and will be limited by the amount set by the black and white sliders. That means if the black and whites are increased, the shadow and highlight sliders can only recover as much data that is available within that defined range. For introducing unique color effects to your images, toning allows you to add color to either the highlights, shadows, or both. Feel free to experiment with different combinations to see what happens. The fill option adds a color fill to your image. You can further adjust color opacity via the amount slider or experiment with blend modes from the drop down menu to achieve different effects. And that brings us to Curves, a tool that allows for precise tonal value and color adjustments. In this graph, the lower left side represents shadows, the middle for midtones, and the top right for highlights. These tonal values can be modified by adding control points along this diagonal line. To add a control point, just double click on the line. Dragging a control point upwards would brighten or intensify tonal values, or dragging it down would darken or reduce them. To remove a control point, double click on it again. So for example, if you'd like to quickly enhance the contrast of an image, add a control point around the lower left side and drag it downwards. This darkens the shadows in the image. Add another to the top right and drag it upwards to increase highlights. This creates the S-curve, a common setting for giving images a contrast boost. More control points can be added and fine-tuned independently for truly accurate adjustments. This level of customization would be the differentiator between curves and the contrast function. The curve tool is also used for color adjustments. A moment ago, we were adjusting image brightness and contrast on the composite channel, represented by the first circle. The composite channel is a combination of the three primary colors that make up the RGB color model, namely red, green, and blue. The RGB color model is an additive color model for screens that creates new colors by mixing light at different intensities. All three primary colors mixed at equal intensity will create white. The same theory applies. Dragging a control point upwards will intensify its tonal value, while dragging it downwards decreases it, and in this case would strengthen the primary color or reduce it to show the color on its opposite side. So if you're talking about the red channel, 
Increasing its tonal values will intensify the red hues of an image, while decreasing it reveals cyan tones. The green channel shifts between green and magenta, while the blue channel shifts between blue and yellow. We move on to some simple use cases. Here's an image of a record player with a reddish tint. To reduce the reds, we'll select the red channel and add a control point to the midtones and drag it downwards. That reduces most of the reds, but there are still some remaining in the lighter areas. Since those are highlights, we'll add one more control point to the top right and drag it down. Most of the reds are now gone. For the next example, we make this image warmer by giving it a yellow tint. Remember, we're working on the additive color model, so yellow is a combination of red and green. Adjustments will take place on these two channels. We'll increase the reds, then the greens to bring out the yellows. And that brings us to the end of this exploration of the Adjust tool. We hope it has given you a better understanding of the tools and their functions. All in all, moderation is key when making adjustments to your images as you want to best preserve image details. See you again in the next video.